Hey everyone, and a very, very happy Tuesday, and welcome to our ARM Tech Talk today from Keek. So it's great you could join us wherever you're joining us from, whether it's your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, it'd be really great to have you today. A uh, bit different background for me to my usual setup. If you've joined one of these tech talks before, uh, it's been great to be joining you today from the San Jose ARM based San Jose, the San Jose based ARM office, I should say. Uh, so great to be joining you this morning from there and to be welcoming folks from Keekso to, for today's ARM Tech Talk. <clears throat> Excuse me, if this have, you haven't joined a Tech Talk before, this is the place for the latest in trends, technologies, and best practices from ARM and our ecosystem. <clears throat> Excuse me, I seem to have a frog in my throat this morning. Um, and it's great to be joining uh, one of our, our ecosystem partners joining us today, Keekso, as I mentioned. Uh, if you want to get involved in today's conversation, there's a whole bunch of ways you can do so. Uh, so, Hogan, should we head to the next slide, if that's all right, uh, just to show you how people can get in touch with us? You can tweet us using the hashtag Arm Tech Talks. Uh, we've done well over 60, 60 of these Arm Tech Talks. They're a weekly series uh, featuring all the latest of trends, technologies, and best practices. So one of the best education resources you can find out there, I'd argue, for anything on Arm. So head to youtube.com slash Arm and check out the Tech Talk playlist so you can find out all of those. Uh, and watch any of those you want to. We had some great talks over the last few weeks from Eurotech, 56K Cloud, GitHub, Canonical, and more. So do check those out. And if you like what you see today and want to sign up for some more talks, then head to arm.com slash tech talks. And here's a sneak peek of what's coming up. Uh, we're just about to confirm the talks in April. Uh, we do have a little couple of breaks coming up because next week we'll be at Embedded World. So I'm going to talk a bit about that later on. Uh, between Embedded World and Tiny Mail Summit, we do have time for one more talk from Remote It, which I'm super excited about. And then, as I mentioned, we've got a couple of weeks break because of Ether and Tiny Mail Summit. But rest assured, we'll be right back at it uh, for the talks on the 18th, 25th of April and beyond. And if you want to see what those are, then make sure you sign up to our Tech Talk on the 21st, where that will be the first chance you'll get to see a little sneak peek of what's coming up for the rest of those months. That's the future, though. Let's talk about today's tech talk. Today, I'm thrilled to have Keekso joining us, uh, talking about their work with ARM Virtual Hardware and their incredible AutoML tool. We've done a, had a couple of talks from Keekso in the past, and they never, ever disappoint. They're always great topics, great demos. And today also has a giveaway, which I'm super excited about uh, for you guys to enter. Obviously, I can't enter it, uh, but uh, would love you guys to. So we'll find out a bit more about that at the end. If you want to ask any questions to Hogan and the team from Keekso on the call at any point, then please use the Zoom Q&A button down below uh, and we'll get to those at the end. So, Hogan, I'm going to hand over to you. Uh, let's get your camera and mic on. There he is. He's joining us today. Uh, representing Keekso, I'm going to be talking through today's topics. Uh, as I say, if you've got any questions for him and the team, please use the Q&A box at the bottom. That's enough from me. Hogan, it's great to have you today. Why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a bit about yourself, and then take it away. Thank you, Tobias. <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name is Hogan Choi. Um, I'm a senior full stack software engineer at Kikso, a TDK company uh, working on the AutoML platform. Um, in 2011, I started my software career at Nano Lambda, a spectral sensor startup that develops the world's uh, smallest digital nano spectrometers. This was the year before uh, my first year at Carnegie Mellon University, where I studied uh, civil environmental engineering, while also taking courses in computer science and architecture. Um, in 2017, I participated in Startup Chile, Generation 15, um, Latin America's number one accelerator, and founded my own startup, Verivina, uh, with the goal of providing vineyard owners devices to measure the quality of their production and optimize their harvest through chemometrics and uh, spectroscopy. I also worked at Boston Nova Robotics in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania as a senior software engineer in the reliability and infrastructure department, where I played a main role in scaling the deployment and operation of uh, shelf scanning autonomous robots from five pilot, pilot su uh, super Walmart stores to 300 plus super Walmart stores in the US, Canada, and the UK. Um, I joined Kikso's software team in October of 2021 and I work across the whole software stack, uh, including the web app, uh, infrastructure, machine learning pipeline, the non-machine learning parts, uh, API, native client, IoT, firmware, and et cetera. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you for uh, joining this Tech Talk. <clears throat> okay. um, 
So for today, uh, this tech talk, we will go over um, what is Kikso, um, Kikso, a TDK company. Um, what is TDK? Uh, what is AutoML and who is it for? Um, some examples of applications built from AutoML. <clears throat> and then what is the ARM Kyle MDK and the Microvision IDE? Uh, what is a CM SysPack? Uh, what is the ARM virtual hardware, uh, AVH, uh, FBP simulator? And then we have a quick demo, um, a live demo uh, showing the integration of AutoML and ARM Kyle MDK uh, Microvision IDE via a CM SysPack. Um, and then we will also run the AutoML generated machine learning model inside the ARM virtual hardware uh, simulator. Uh, targeting the Cortex M55. <clears throat> so Kikso, a TDK company, uh, uh, who we are. Um, so Kikso was founded um, and spun out of Carnegie Mellon University in 2012. And we were recently acquired by TDK in January of 2023. Um, Kikso is uh, a, uh, Kikso AutoML is a automated machine learning platform um, intuitive ML platform enabling e efficient development of ML applications del delivers intelligence wherever sensor data is ge generated. We also have another product called the Kikso Model Converter, um, which is an API service that um, optimizes and converts your existing tree-based models to run on the ARM Cortex M0 uh, to ARM Cortex M4 platform. Um, Kikso has already commercialized uh, machine learning applications um, and deployed to 400 million plus devices in the market. Um, one of which is the FingerSense is the input type class, uh, classification with touch screens. Um, so this is um, adding more than just your swiping and pinching on the uh, touch screen smartphone um, using um, the accelerometer and gyroscope and capacitive uh, touch screen on your phone. Um, able to detect um, advanced gestures like knuckle uh, knocking, knuckle swiping, um, using a very lightweight machine learning model. Um, touch tools is another one. Understanding user intentions from gestures and ear sense, which is a software only proximity sensing solution. Um, so if you have a Hawaii phone um, today, most chances are that the Kikso finger sense and touch tools and ear sense are running um, um, behind the scenes of these phones. Um, and actually the Kikso AutoML machine learning platform, uh, uh, this platform was the tooling used to actually develop finger stance and touch tools and ear sense. And then they actually productized AutoML so that other users and embedded um, developers could also have this automated machine learning platform. Um, what is TDK? Uh, TDK is a comprehensive electronic components manufacturer, uh, manufacturer leading the world in magnetic technology. TDK's diverse range of electronic components are at work all the time inside the familiar uh, products that you use every day. Um, um, here's an um, example of one of their uh, cassette tapes, magnetic uh, strip cassette tapes. Um, this is their uh, in-wheel sense project, which is adding uh, smart sensors into high-performance uh, um, automobile wheels. And this is their uh, augmented reality headset. Um, this is different electronic components like diodes and capacitors that they make, um, different sensors. Um, and then this is an example of one of their MEMS technology, a micro electronic, uh, electromechanical uh, system. This is actually a MEMS microphone. Um, TDK is a global company and they're headquartered in Japan. And um, they have many offices and many factories all over the world. Uh, they're, they are a global company. <clears throat> so what is AutoML? Uh, AutoML is a no-code embedded machine learning platform. So um, who is it for? Um, these are the different criteria of who AutoML uh, would be for. Um, I team am a device maker, hardware developer, example, like Arduino, STM, NRF, et cetera. And I'm creating a new device with an ARM MCU processor and peripheral sensors, uh, such as gyroscope, temperature, light, light sensor, microphone, and so on. Um, and criteria number two, I want to utilize machine learning AI using the sensor data with the limited memory flash and computational power on board but with low latency. 
So um, a powerful real-time machine learning algorithm to detect events that classical algorithms would miss with such computational constraints, such as only having 128 kilobytes of memory uh, available. <clears throat> um, and then the third criteria is I want to ensure that the overall power consumption of the computation on the device will allow for maximum battery life. So you might be designing a device where um, you're only uh, expecting to recharge the device every two months or maybe even uh, every two years. Um, <clears throat> okay. uh, what is AutoML? So um, how will AutoML benefit me and the team? So um, uh, this person team has two separate development workflows. Um, the first one being firmware, hardware, and device workflow. And this might look like RTOS, uh, Arduino, MicroPython, IAR, ARMID, et cetera. Um, the second workflow would be um, embedded AI, machine learning workflow, and this might look like TensorFlow, PyTorch. Um, each workflow is quite time consuming and embedded AI resources are hard to come by. Um, embedded AI resource uh, being experts of machine learning with constrained resources um, like CPU and memory. Um, <clears throat> AutoML is a service that automates the embedded AI workflow for you while generating intelligent machine learning models. <clears throat> so how does AutoML, AutoML work? Um, AutoML is a fully automated ML pipeline for edge devices. So these are the kind of different steps that a user would have to take to generate a machine learning model from AutoML. Um, the first step being the user has to define a project and that might be, um, so the different kind of classifications it could be single class, uh, single class classification, multi-class classification, or multi-class anomaly. Um, and then once the user uh, selects which kind of classification project they want, they select the target hardware and the different sensors that they want to utilize. Um, so this might be like the Arduino, Nano, um, IoT board, and um, with the accelerometer and gyroscope. And then the next step is to actually collect and upload the data using the AutoML platform. And then um, that data, uh, the training data is then uh, sent through our automated machine learning pipeline, um, which, and the steps in the pipeline are the data cleaning, pre-processing, um, feature extraction and selection, model selection, uh, hyperparameter optimization, model validation, um, converting the model to C code for embedded, um, applications and then um, compiling the target, uh, compiling the um, model and the firmware package for the specific uh, target device. And then at the end of this pipeline, it sh uh, should generate the machine learning binary and static library, which the user can deploy to their edge devices. Um, so again, the different steps are to define a project in the classification, um, select the sensors and uh, target hardware, collect data, and then send it through our automated machine learning platform, and then uh, deploy and download the generated machine learning package. <clears throat> so what does um, auto, auto ML data labeling look like? Um, we have a data segmentation editor where you can manually go and uh, segment different time series data. Here I'm segmenting uh, different types of cl uh, claps like clap and clap B. And then we've also recently added a new feature called the auto assisted segmentation, where once you manually segment a, um, a segmentation, you can use the assisted segmentation button here, uh, which will go and automatically um, find all the similar segments that uh, of the one that you manually selected. Um, and this saves a lot of time during the um, segmentation for the user. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> AutoML and the supported platforms. Uh, we support ARM Cortex M4F or ARM Cortex M0 Plus. Um, on our fully supported platforms, Kixo AutoML handles the machine learning process end to end. This includes data collection, interfacing with sensors, training machine learning models, and producing a end uh, flashable binary. 
The fully supported platforms are um, Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense, Arduino Nano 33 IoT, Arduino Nicholas Sense ME, um, <clears throat> which has the Bosch, uh, Bosch gas sensor, um, the ARM virtual hardware, specifically the Core Stone S300 with, uh, with the Athos uh, U55 MPU, um, the SD um, Micro sensor tile box, and the ST Micro ST Win. And then we also support the TDK i3 Micro, but uh, this is not yet publicly available. So for all for uh, this list of fully supported platforms, um, um, <clears throat> the end-to-end -end process is all supported by AutoML. <clears throat> um, some examples of AutoML applications, um, uh, finger sense like we discussed, uh, keyword detection, fault detection, and more. So finger sense um, on Hawaii phones, um, being able to do more advanced kind of uh, touch gestures using a very lightweight but powerful machine learning model. Um, so you can see the uh, swiping with your knuckles, um, keyword detection, um, gesture detection, uh, machine fault detection. Um, so using vib vibration sensors, um, um, detecting um, faults or um, um, yeah, faults on machines before it happens. Um, and then um, gas environmental detection and more. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what is in the demo for today? Um, today we'll go over collecting and labeling microphone data, um, generating a machine learning model with the data that we collected and labeled. Um, and then we will go on to um, demonstrate how how to integrate Kixo AutoML's model into an existing ARM Kyle MDK Microvision IDE project via a CM SysPack. And then we will also show how to do fast prototyping machine learning models uh, with ARM virtual hardware, the FBP simulator. So how do I test and run my Kixo AutoML generated machine learning model uh, on a simulated device and still be guaranteed the same results on the physical device? <clears throat> So what is ARM Kyle MDK and what is Microvision? Mm -hmm. um, so ARM Kyle MDK is the most comprehensive software development solution for ARM-based microcontrollers. It includes all components that you need to create, build, and debug embedded applications. Um, so if you're developing any kind of ARM-based uh, embedded application, um, um, there's a very good chance you will probably use ARM Kyle, which has everything that you require to build it from end to end. Um, what is the Microvision IDE? The Microvision IDE combines project management, runtime environment, build facilities, source code editing, and program debugging in a single powerful environment. Microvision is easy to use and accelerates your embedded software development. So the Microvision ID is an ID that's included as a part of the ARM Kyle MDK, um, which uses the ARM uh, compiler version five or six. And then you can see a screenshot of the um, ID here. And then the different kind of core components that are included in the MDK um, um, uh, development kit. <clears throat> What is CMSYS? Um, CMSYS is a standard and package manager for embedded software packages. The open CMSYS pack project will deliver the infrastructure to integrate and manage software components and improve code reuse across embedded and IoT projects. The project is currently hosted and managed as an incubation project by Lenaro and in partnership with ARM, NXP, and ST. Um, you can find out more about this uh, uh, standard and committee at the opencmsyspack.org. <clears throat> um, to put it simply, uh, CMSYS packs are a standard packaging mechanism for different embedded uh, embedded software libraries and packages, uh, similar to your Python uh, pip wheel or um, your Debian.debian package. <clears throat> kind of a unified and standard packaging mechanism for different um, embedded uh, development tools and software. Yeah. <clears throat> what is ARM Virtual Hardware, AVH? Um, ARM Virtual Hardware is a fixed virtual platform. 
Um, and, uh, AVH, uh, the ARM virtual hardware target is a functionally accurate representation of a physical SOC simulating a software visible behavior. Runs as a simple application in a Linux or Windows environment for easy scalability in the cloud. Um, removes dependency from alt RTL or silicon availability, um, for example, like board farms. <clears throat> AutoML supports AVH, specifically the Corestone SSC 310 plus ARM Athos U55 FEP, which is the ARM Cortex M55 processor. <clears throat> Um, user can deploy and test their AutoML built models uh, to the FVP simulator on the cloud, the Linux, uh, AWS, or the user can download the AutoML built model and test it on their ID ARM simulator locally uh, um, on Windows, such as the Microvision ID. <clears throat> um, uh, Kixel AutoML uh, is uh, release 1.20 is uh, planned for the end of March 2023, and these are the specific um, AutoML ARM virtual hardware enhancements that are planned for 1.20 release. Um, support for the Vela compiler for neural network acceleration. So this now allows the user to take advantage of the Athos U55 NPU um, so that they can get some uh, uh, even uh, lower latency for um, neural network models using the MPU Athos U55 processor. Um, <clears throat> for our demo, uh, we will not be using the Athos U55. Um, we will run it directly on the uh, ARM Cortex M55, um, uh, ARM Cortex M55 but um, <clears throat> because the model is so lightweight and tiny, uh, it's, it's already very fast. <clears throat> and then um, also the ability to export uh, static library and the AXF application file with the AVH projects, um, and then the ARM Kyle ID integration via SIM SysPacks. <clears throat> so these are all the planned uh, features for AVH for the 1.20 release, uh, which will be the end of March 2023. <clears throat> okay, so now time for the demo. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, okay, so this is uh, AutoML. Um, I've already created a project here. It's a ARM virtual hardware project in the multi-class classification project. Um, just to show you guys how to create a new project and what it looks like. Um, if I want to create a new project, go to create project. I type in the project name. Uh, different classification types we have are multi-class classification, single-class anomaly classification, and multi-class anomaly classification. And then these are the different target hardwares that we support. Um, and for today's demo, we will be using the ARM virtual hardware. <clears throat> I've already created a project. And now I will show you um, <clears throat> um, what it looks like to do data collection through AutoML. So I will create a new uh, environment and I'll call this microphone um, data collection. Okay. And then I will uh, configure the sensors and for ARM virtual hardware, currently we only support the microphone at uh, 16,000 Hertz. <clears throat> and then I will call this test collection um, zero. And then I will do 15 seconds of data recording. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then I will just show a quick demonstration of how to, what it looks like to record data. <clears throat> Okay, and then um, we can um, what it looks like to record data. Yeah, play back what we recorded. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this is not the best microphone, but it should be okay. Um, okay, now it's saving and uploading the data. Okay. 
And then once the data is uh, recorded, um, we can go and uh, actually segment, segment the data. Um, so we'll actually use a uh, data collection that I did prior. Um, and then so, This is the data segmentation editor. Um, and then um, here we can <clears throat> segment a different class. It's actually not so uh, easy to tell what the different class are here, but um, we'll just clap A. Uh, uh, okay, so let's say this is a clap and the clap. Okay, and then um, we can create a different um, class here, and I'll label this blue. I mean, not red. And this is a uh, class B. Uh, oh, actually, let's do class C. Okay. And then, if I want to uh, speed up that process and not have to manually go and uh, segment everything uh, by hand, I can use the uh, assistive segmentation editor. And I have the different classes here that I've manually select, um, segmented. And I want to go find more of these classes uh, uh, along the whole data set. Then I can use the assist assistive segmentation, which will go automatically find those segments for me. Okay. So that's what data collection looks like. Um, and then I will show you what it looks like to actually start a new uh, training build. So I'm gonna select all the different uh, data collections that I've done. Oh, actually, um, here's the data that we just collected. Um, let's go, that data probably looks a little better. Okay, that looks much better. So here, um, I will do clap A. Segment like such. Okay. And et cetera. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now we will um, start a new model build. Um, so select all the different data collections that I want to include as training data and all the different classes. I could exclude a class or include a class. <clears throat> and then these are the different classes. I could group the different classes into specific groups, such as CLAP A and uh, CLAP A's into CLAP A, or um, all the CLAPs into CLAP, and et cetera. <clears throat> I would just choose automatic sensor and feature group selection, but if I wanted to, I could manually select which sensors I wanted to choose. Uh, we only have one sensor for this project, so. And then the inference settings and uh, classification interval will let the automated uh, pipeline determine that for us. Um, and then for the different machine learning models, I will go and try all the different uh, models. We have gradient boosting machine, random forest, XGB boost, um, ANN artificial neural network, uh, convolutional neural network, uh, different SVM models, um, and then decision tree, um, Gaussian naive Bayes and logistic regression. Um, and if I wanted to set a hard constraint on how big my machine learning model uh, can actually be in terms of flash and RAM size, we can even uh, make it smaller. By default for this project is set to 500 kilobytes, but I could set it to uh, 200 kilobytes um, and so on. <clears throat> And then I will also generate learning curves and allow for hyperparameter tuning uh, optimization. And once I'm ready, I can just start training and it will uh, start training the different models. I've already built the model, so we will use an existing model. <clears throat> um, I've already built a um, ANN model that seems to work decently well. Uh, it has a cross-validation score of um, 83%. And if I wanted to look at the performance summary, I can go and look at the different kind of um, plots and different metrics and stats. Um, this is kind of the distribution of the training data, um, PCA plot, <clears throat> confusion matrix, uh, cross-validation, um, <clears throat> and training curve, and so on. Okay. 
So what I want to do is I've already now built this model and this specifically this ANN model, and I want to include it into my um, existing UVision project, um, which is here, um, which is actually just the example um, micro speech ARM virtual hardware project from ARM. Um, but their example actually used a TensorFlow model, but I uh, taken out the TensorFlow model, replaced it with the Kixo model. Um, <clears throat> So what I want to do is actually download the model, the ANN model. I want to download the CM syspack. Then once it's downloaded, I will open it and then I will install it. Um, it's already been installed, but I'll install it again. And that's all it takes to uh, install it. And then the uh, microvision ID detects that a new software pack uh, has been installed. Okay. <clears throat> And then now I will open up the CMSYS package manager. Um, and here I will um, go and make sure that I've included the ANN model, the Kixo ANN model that I just downloaded. So uh, QX model build 29780 ANN. And then once I've selected that, I press okay. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> um, I will build the project. <clears throat> While it's building, um, uh, there's uh, two main uh, Kixo functions that are uh, very uh, important. One is the QX fill sensor data, which uh, fills the different uh, sensor data buffers for the different um, sensors. So here I'm um, using pre-saved um, audio microphone data, um, as you can see here. Um, uh, I, I'm filling the microphone sensor data buffer with the pre-saved data buffer. And once that buffer uh, is full with, um, with enough prediction um, uh, uh, samples, <clears throat> I will go ahead and call QX classify and that will, um, return a class number um, 0, 1, 2, um, uh, where we have the different classes, 0 being clap and 2 being silence. And then if a clap is detected, the LED will be turned on. And if the uh, clap is not detected and silence is detected, the LED will turn off. OK, so I will now, um, we will now run the simulator. <clears throat> So now we will run the simulator. Uh, okay. uh, here you can see that our um, uh, Kixo machine learning model is running inside the ARM virtual hardware simulator. Um, our model was originally um, um, compiled for the Cortex M55 and is running inside the simulator on my Windows machine um, and is detecting clap for uh, the different segments here of this pre-saved audio microphone data. And anytime a clap is detected, uh, you can see that the LED is turning on and off. And as you can see, um, the, <clears throat> the classification um, latency is quite fast um, because the model is tiny, but very powerful. <clears throat> um, so hopefully you can kind of get a sense of how the simulator um, allows for fast prototyping and verification and testing of kind of embedded machine learning models inside a simulated uh, uh, ARM uh, platform. So, okay, <clears throat> so that is the demo. Okay. Uh, um, thank you very much. Um, uh, Thank you, Hogan. That was awesome. Awesome tech talk. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. And audience, I hope you enjoyed it too, as much as as much as I did. And if you did, please get your questions in. Uh, we'd love to love to hear them. Before we jump to the questions, I think we've got two things I want to cover. First is embedded world. 
so we will, I will be at Embedded World in Hall 4, Stand 4, 504. There's a lot of fours there. Uh, so if you're interested in finding more about what we're doing at Embedded World, we've got a bunch of talks, the developer program meetup uh, mm -hmm. on the Wednesday. Uh, we've got a variety of demos on the ARM booth, including one from Keekso. Uh, then please do head to arm.com slash embedded world where all of the details are, and we'd love for you to do that. Um, Elias and Michael, do you want to just uh, jump in about uh, what's happening at Embedded World for you guys and tell us a bit more? Yeah, sounds great. Thanks, Tobias. So, um, so yeah, uh, Kixo will be at Embedded World. Uh, we've been invited to uh, showcase our demos and some of our technology on the ARM booth. Uh, as Tobias said, we're over in Hall 4, uh, Stand 4, 504. Um, again, lots of force. Uh, but we're really excited to show... Um, our newest integration uh, into the ARM Kyle uh, MDK and how Kixel Auto ML is really closing the gap between uh, machine learning development and embedded development uh, through this end-to-end -end seamless process of just a few clicks, you know, directly of exporting your model from Kixel Auto ML as Hogan showed here and then integrating it into your own project. So we've got a couple of really good demos there. Uh, one of the ones that Hogan, Hogan showed today with ARM virtual hardware. And then we also have kind of an apples to apples comparison on, on doing the exact same thing, but with actual physical hardware. So really exciting stuff there. And we also thanks for, thanks for having us. No, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate that. And that's a great bit of information. And yeah, we're really, I'm really excited to be uh, meeting you guys and seeing that demo in person. You know, demos yes. are great on a tech talk and absolutely great to see the one today, but super stoked to see the one in Embedded World in person. Um, Sounds great. And then do you want to put a link to the uh, giveaway? Tell yeah, a bit more absolutely. About the giveaway? Yeah, so we're uh, for our giveaway this, uh, this go around, we are giving away a free six month uh, pro license to Kixel Auto ML. So I'm posting that up right here in the uh, in the webinar chat. Um, simply just fill out the form here and uh, we will um, provision your account and send you a license uh, probably within the next 30 days or so. Uh, lots of great stuff in the uh, in the forthcoming Kixel Auto ML as uh, 1.20, as, as Hogan said, um, and lots of great stuff that we recently released, such as the assisted segmentation, the data augmentation, uh, the model compression, and all of those good things. So we're constantly making investments into the tool uh, to make it more streamlined, user-friendly, as well as completely way more powerful uh, than it's ever been. Uh, so yeah, please uh, fill out the form uh, and check out the tool. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, it's really exciting to see what you guys are doing and uh, to see that progression over the last few years as uh, we've been working with you as a as an ARM partner as well. You know, you guys have been on fire. So um, really exciting oh, to see you. today's talk. So uh, and it's great to always have Keekso back as a, as a tech talk uh, Pectoral presenter. So um, no, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, do check out the form. It's in the chat, uh, I believe. Actually, no, it hasn't quite gone through. I will post that into everyone because I've just remembered, Michael, you might not have access to post everyone. So I've made sure <laughs> that's now in the chat so everyone can see it because everyone's probably <laughs> cramming going, ah, where's the link? Uh, you can now yeah. see it, hopefully. Um, so re definitely, um, definitely check that out and uh, fill out the form for sure. Um, I've got a couple of questions before we uh, jump to the audience one. So please get your questions in, folks. Uh, use the Zoom Q&A box to do so. Um, so we talked a lot about the CM pack integration, right? Um, would love to hear what other ARM-based platforms you've got that, that Kikso AutoML supports with this integration besides, with CM Syspacks uh, integration beside ARM virtual hardware. Yeah, so for the uh, 1.20 release, uh, you should... Um, expect to see the CMSYS pack available for all our different supported platforms, um, including Arduino and the ST Micro. Um, yeah, not just the ARM virtual hardware. <clears throat> awesome. That's great. That's great. Yeah. And if you're interested more about CMSYS packs and head to the links that we shared earlier in the slides, all the slides, and forgot to mention at the beginning, actually, today's slides will be available immediately after the talk. Uh, so uh, as will the recording on YouTube. So make sure you head to arm.com uh, and find the slides there. If you've got any questions, reach out to myself or any of the, uh, and to any of the Kikso team as well. Um, and we obviously showed the, uh, the microphone sensor, right, Hogan, on your, um, on your demo, giving yourself a slow clap, right? I think actually you deserve a massive round of applause, not a slow <laughs> clap. Um, but do you sure. plan to support anything more than a microphone sensor for ARM virtual hardware uh, with Kikso? 
Uh, yes, actually, um, through the uh, SDS is a streaming uh, uh, sensor data stream interface that ARM and Kixo are actually um, working on. And I, and actually, um, if you go to Embedded World, you will be able to learn more about the SDS. Um, Michael and Elias could elaborate more on that. <clears throat> Sorry, Elias. turning myself yeah. on. Hi, I'm Elias. I'm, I lead the machine learning team at Kixo. Um, and yeah, like Hogan said, uh, we're, we've been partnering closely with uh, some of the uh, ARM R&D team on this new uh, sensor data stream, which we are not talking about in too much detail because I think you guys are going to announce it next week at Embedded ML. But uh, it'll be a really exciting interface. Um, and I'm uh, actually going to go, if you don't mind, Tobias, because we just got a question on the, the Q&A chat for a very similar Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Kind of topic. Say, so know. just the question was for ARM FVP, can we get input with file IO semi-hosting instead of reading the input samples from CRAs? And yeah, that's a lot of the power of... Um, the ARM virtual hardware platform is, you know, there's a really nice architecture there for um, using their VSI interface. Those are virtual streaming interfaces that, you know, kind of are the equivalent of the hardware inputs from the actual sensors. Um, in the FVP, uh, in the early versions, it was kind of really focused on microphone, although that the virtual streaming interfaces, the VSI interfaces really could support anything. Uh, and and what's, what'll be exciting in upcoming releases is it will make it really easy to stream uh, any kind of data into those uh, virtual hardware platforms and kind of run them from multiple different files on disk, you know, and then just kind of change those files out, run the whole uh, thing again and kind of do the same, same kind of thing. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and a, a question's come in about uh, using STM32 Cube. Can I use the same simulator as you show for Kyle's software? So I'm not sure if this is directly related to ARM virtual hardware or for Kixo. I don't know if you want to, you've got any input on that, folks, or I can. I think we have to, one caveat we have to make, uh, I think, is the STWIN1B uh, is yep. the supported uh, hardware for uh, for Kixo Auto ML. So um, yeah, that one would be. Uh, uh, supported for uh, supported from the platform um, for the go ahead, Elias. I so I think they were also asking about the so we absolutely do support that hardware. Um, you could definitely go through the same kind of flow, and uh, I think as Michael mentioned before, at Embedded World, we'll actually be showing a demo that's very similar to the one. Hogan just showed where we kind of uh, you know build a model and then deploy it. In this case, we we. Hogan showed deploying it on our virtual hardware. We'll also have a demo where we show deploying yeah. it to an STWIN uh, device itself and show, you know, just basically the exact same flow working. Um, for the question about the part of the second part of the question where you say you use the same simulator as you show to Kyle software, um, the ARM virtual hardware stuff, I don't think you can directly use that from the STM32 cube development environment. Um, they might have developed that. We haven't really played with that IDE as directly or as closely as we have the ARM IDEs. Um, I believe in ARM virtual hardware, there is a flow that might still be under beta. You might have to contact for access that lets you um, do a full virtual hardware flow on a platform on a, that looks very much like the STWIN um, platform instead of you know the the platform we showed, which was more of an M55, U55 kind of processor. Yeah, exa exactly. And that, that the, so you're, there's kind of two technologies, right, we've spoken about, which is the FVP technology that um, we're referring to today and the Keeks integration with that and using Kyle there. But there's also our private beta um, for third-party boards that ARM does, which has an ST32U5, I believe it is in there. Um, so you can go and check that out if that would be more suited for your workflow. Uh, we've done all kinds of integration. Indeed, we were talking about it um, a few weeks ago, some work we're doing with with you know with some major partners on that. Uh, so do check out our tech talks on that and um, and the work we've been doing there. So um, yeah, do check out all the information about ARM virtual hardware is at arm.com slash virtual hardware. Um, there's a hyphen between the two, and I'll paste the link in the chat shortly. Uh, we've got a question in about supporting vision models, especially object detection. Do you support them? Yeah, and the 
The short answer is no. Um, we're yeah. kind of very focused. Uh, Kixo overall is very focused on um, time series based sensors. So microphone is certainly one, but lots of motion sensors and environmental sensors. Um, we don't really focus on uh, vision models and you know object detection or activity detection from that kind of sense, just because the flows and the data end up looking very different um, in a lot of ways. Uh, so we uh, have certainly done work like that with um, in more of our machine learning consulting kind of role and have definitely worked with partners and had some projects on that kind of stuff. So feel free to contact us if you have a very specific mo project in mind. But using Kixo Auto ML as it is uh, today, it's really focused on time series sensor data. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I think we've got time for a couple more questions. So a couple more minutes, a couple more questions. Do you get those? do get those in um but yeah no really excited to see you guys at embedded well please make sure you enter the folks enter the giveaway any more information about arm virtual hardware is at arm.com slash virtual uh, hyphen hardware so you can find out more there um as i said we've got time for one more quick question uh probably and then we'll we'll wrap up but elias michael do you have anything else to add based on um the earlier tech talk anything else you want to highlight um, the only other thing I was going to mention is you talked about Embedded World and a little bit earlier, you mentioned uh, the Tiny ML Summit, which is two weeks later, the last week of March. Um, so I'll be there uh, and some of the rest of us from Kixo will be there. Some people from TDK will also be there. And I know Arm uh, and I think you, Tobias, will be there as well. Um, so we're going to have, uh, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff there. I'm I'm pitching it a little bit because I'm also on the organizing committee for uh, the Tiny ML uh, summit pitch away, and pitch away. <laughs> you know, I think there's going to be a lot of really good and exciting talks um, at the Tiny ML Summit this year, where we're really focusing a lot in the talks about showing how people have deployed real solutions using these kinds of tiny machine learning models that'll run on lightweight embedded hardware mostly ARM Cortex cores. Um, and uh, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of really exciting uh, talks, kind of going over. What are the challenges there? What are the opportunities? What worked? What didn't? Um, stuff like that. So it should be a really fun event from that perspective as well. Definitely. We're super excited about it. And um, yeah, if you want more information, then uh, do check out Tiny ML Summit. We're going to be there. Kixo will be there. It's great. We're really excited for it. We've got a few talks and posters and other bits and pieces accepted. So um, yeah, we're really excited to be seeing how the uh, the future of, of tiny mail really is running on arm and, uh, and how you can build the future of tiny mail on arm there so do check that out we're super excited by it just uh three weeks out it's crazy how much time is flying in embedded worlds already next week um so um we'll i'm just going to repaste the link because i think there's a couple of issues with the uh seeing the link in the chat just to make sure everyone's got it for the giveaway um, let me know if you've still got any issues there. But yeah, we're really excited for Tiny ML Summit and Embedded World. It's kind of a busy month, March, of uh, of events. So, um, you know, it's one after the other, um, but really important and exciting opportunities for, uh, for folks to get involved. So, yeah, do check out Tiny ML Summit, register, uh, find out more there if you want to come along. And uh, I think there's an open day on the Monday as well, um, Monday afternoon, where you can see all the demos um, as well. So do check that out. Um, so I think we have this, we'll call it time there. I think we're now uh, out of questions. So um, Hogan, Michael, Elias, is there anything final words you want to add uh, before we wrap up today? I'll start with you, Hogan. Uh, thank you, Tobias and Arm, uh, for the opportunity to tech talk. Um, I had a lot of fun. I hope um, the audience enjoyed it and it was an um, uh, educational tech talk. <clears throat> Thank you, Hogan. I no, really appreciate your uh, your talk today and uh, giving such a great presentation and demo. Uh, Michael, do you want to add anything else? Uh, just a big thank you to Arm for having us. Uh, we always appreciate uh, doing these tech talks and we really appreciate being able to, uh, you know, our partnership with Arm and being able to showcase um, a lot of this progress. So thanks for having us. Thanks for having us at Embedded World. And uh, we're really looking forward to, uh, to showing everybody uh, the Arm Kyle integration. Thank you. Finally, Elias. Nope. Sounds great. Thanks very much, everybody, awesome. for your time. Have a great one. Thank you so much, everyone. Really, really appreciate it. We'll see you in, uh, see you next week in Embedded World, two weeks later in our yeah. Tech Talk, and then a week after that at Tiny Mail Summit. So lots coming up. If you want the slides from today, recording, it's all available on arm.com. And we look forward to seeing you in two weeks for another of our Arm Tech Talks for all the latest in trends, 
technologies and best practices from ARM and our ecosystem partners. So Hogan, Michael, Elias, thank you so much today for your great presentation. And audience, thanks for all your great questions and interaction. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks all. Thank you.